This is 50-year-old ex-police officer Lionel Marchetti. Lionel is about to be interrogated by the Plant City, Florida Police Department after he shot and killed his ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend. Lionel, where'd you go to school at? Did you go to high school around here? Or uh, I'm in uh, California. I went to uh, Urban Day High School, uh, Catholic school. You uh, college after that? Went to uh, University of Southern California. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, Hampton Institute. I uh, got drafted by the San Antonio Spurs in 1981, didn't make the team, went to Mexico for a couple of years, came back, worked as a security guard, and then got into security management, and then I, during that time I went to part-time police academy, got my certification, got married, had kids, got divorced, moved out here. She followed me out here, and then she moved back. I met, we've been together since 1998. You know, we've had our ups and downs. She's kicked me out three times. Uh, this time, actually, I just decided, you know, to move because it was just, I just couldn't, couldn't cope anymore. Just, just the way she was treating me. And I just didn't see a future. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that we were still linked by the house. And, you know, I still talked to her and she still called me and I was doing some work on her website. And, you know, and just that, I'm, I'm straightforward. I, I don't hide things. I don't lie to people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I was headed to go fishing, and I forgot my bucket and my folding chair. My folding chair is in my old office. I should have never been there. I should have never been there. I could have just got another fucking bucket. On March 25th, 2010, Lionel's ex-girlfriend wanted to remove some of her belongings from the home they once shared. She brought her boyfriend with her to lend a hand. When Lionel saw them together, it filled him with rage, so he shot him four times. After he was dead, Lionel called the police and waited for them to arrive. <laughs> you can't. When I go fishing, I don't even eat the fucking fish. <laughs> so you want you ready to go fish and you want to buy the house real quick for the bucket? Just to get the just to get we're just stupid, you know? Big time. What happened when you got there? You know, you hear things, you see things, you, you interpret things, and you ask questions, you know. I mean, you know, I always ask you, you know, what is it with you and this guy? You know, and since we moved there, he would always come around when I wasn't there. And, you know, neighbor sneakered about it. He'd say, hey, you know, I see this white truck all the time. I'm like, all right, so I asked her. Well, yeah, he bought a dog from her. And something happened to the dog. She replaced it. You know, he's a plumber. He, does handiwork, he loves his job, but, but it was just odd, and just the way they behaved around me, you know, I, I don't know, I just don't feel like, every time I asked her a question, she just, it's not even business, or she would just lie, and I lost it, I, I, I lost it, you know, it's just like, I saw this son, and I, you know, one day, you know, and I, I asked him, you know, why are you, why are you at the house again? You know, he's supposed to have a girlfriend, but he spends more time in my house than at his. And I just left because I had some stuff, some very things to do. On the Sunday? Yeah. And and then, you know, today I go, there he is, just walking out of the house like he owned it, you know. And, and I just lost it. And I lost it. And, you know, it was really f***ed up because today I bought the holster and I've been carrying it in the trunk. I was kept even when I got my permit I had a case kept it in the trunk. You know, it's just just stupid. Just where was it today? <sighs> you know I give in the trunk where was it today? Uh, it was on the car sheet. Okay. Along with the uh, the uh, carrying case or the holster too? I don't know the holster I don't know. Oh, you had it on? You normally have it on or No, I was just trying to get used to having it. I, I normally don't you know even carry it. I mean the only time I actually carry the gun is when I go downtown because I have this little side business where I do web hosting and I park downtown to go up at the telecom building and it's, it's scary, mm -hmm. you know. 
And that was one of my biggest concerns. And that was it. That was the only reason, you know. But it's it just that I picked it up today and I put it on my way just to get used to it. And, you know, my, my gut is so big, it just, it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. So, I, you know, I put the gun under the seat. You know, I read that pamphlet on the, on the weapon where it's, you know, you got to keep it on you or near you. And I just stuck it under the seat. And, you know, I just said, I, I pulled up, I saw her coming out. I put it in park and I was just going to go, you know, and tell her I'm going to go in and get the chair. And then I saw him walking out. And I, you know, and, oh. So when you saw him walking out, were you, were you just, did you just get angry? I mean, were you just upset? I, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Did she say anything to you when you walked out, or did you say anything to her or him? She was standing right in front of me, and right. she said, well, like, I think she said, I think she was said you were going to Miami. And I said, yeah, I was. And I am. I mean, that was the plan. And then after that, it's just, it all happened so fast, you know, and... Was he still inside when you were talking to her outside? No, he was okay. outside in the back. He'd already walked out? Yeah. Okay. So what happens next? I, I know you say you, you lost it, and, and you can go slow if you want to, but... Uh, he was laying on the ground, man, bleeding and gasping. How did he get that way? Oh. Don't make So part of this process, Lionel, is, and I, kn I know it's hard for you, okay, is to take it step by step, and if you need time, that's fine. But, mm -hmm. you know, we need to hear what happened, okay? Because the only thing we know is what we see. And we don't know how it gets that way. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I believe you are. I believe you're sorry. Oh my God! But like I said, you know, we have to we have to get the truth out here. Oh, the truth of it is dead. I understand that. But it's our job to figure out how he got that way. Okay. And unfortunately, right now, you're the only one that can tell us that. So we know that you go there to get a chair, okay? Uh, we know that your gun is under the front seat, the front driver's seat, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. You get out of the car, you have the, the gun holster around your waist, but the gun's not in there, it's underneath the front driver's seat. I uh, just put, I put it in my back pocket. Okay. So you get out of the, the driver's seat, you pull in the driveway, you get out of the driver's seat, and you plan on going inside just to get a bucket or in or a chair, is that correct? Go the, fishing. The, the chair, the bucket was... What did it do? Like in the house? No, it was on the side of the house. Side of the house, okay. And as you get out, you see her, and what's her first name? Comes out, and then you see him walk walk out of the house behind her. Yeah, she walks out. Okay. And goes by on the side of his truck. Mm -hmm. And then I go into the patio, and I'm telling her I'm going to get my chair. And then I see him walking out with the dog. He's like, he on the house, and I just, I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have been there. Lionel was a hoarder. He hated letting things go, even if they no longer served a purpose. His home was filled with the things he collected over the years that he had no use for. Lionel had been dating his girlfriend for over 10 years, and when he saw another man taking her away from him, he couldn't stand the thought of losing her. At that point, did he say anything at all? He, he looked like he raised his, he was raising his hand or, I don't know what he was doing with his right hand. I couldn't tell. But it just, I just reacted, you know. I, How'd you react? I, I reached in my back pocket and the only, the only thing I can remember after that, he was just laying there. And then I, I just, <clears throat> And then I, yeah, I, 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 I ran over and, and got her and I said, look, we've we got to get help. This is, 
And I'm like, I got the house phone, and then she was trying to use her phone, and the phones, the, the, the cell phones never work in the house. They're, you know, we're running back and forth, and we gotta get the dogs in the house so we can try to help them. And I'm calling, and I'm asking her to help me. You know, I'm trying to tell paramedics what's going on. And she's running off to the fucking gate, and I'm trying to get her to help me, and she just keeps going and on and on. And so you say you reach back into your back pocket. What's in your back pocket? Oh, God. You know what was in my back pocket. I just well, you, well, you told me the gun was under the front seat. Yes. Okay, so what's in your back pocket? My back pocket was my gun. Okay, so the gun wasn't under your front seat. It was in your back pocket? When I drove to the house, the gun was under the seat. It was in my back pocket because if you look at my car, mm -hmm. I noticed that my seat because... Big guy? Big guy. Okay. Um, the springs burst, so I'm sitting on this Hubble thing, so even my wallet, if I put it in my pocket, it hurts my ass. Mm -hmm. Use my language. It's okay. So I didn't have it in my back pocket while I was driving. There. Okay. So when you get it, before you get out of the car, you, you get it from underneath the seat and put it in your back pocket. Is that what you're saying? I, um, I had my cell phone on the side, I grabbed my cell phone, stuck that in my pocket. I reached underneath, got it, and put it in my back pocket. And when you say, yeah, you mean the gun, the right? gun. Okay. I got out of the car, and I closed the door, she was coming up. And I said, I gotta get my chair in the back room. She was like going to, towards the kennels. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, thanks. Yeah, see. Yeah. Uh, no. I'm just trying to describe how I was moving. Oh, okay. Okay. But she went, the truck, okay, my car is right here. All right, that's his truck, the water. My car is right here. I walked around here. There's the door, okay, the side door. She comes around, one of the dogs, she moves by his truck behind his truck and my car, and says, I'm going to go in and get my chair. And then I just turned, I looked at her, and then I cleared my eyes, see him coming out of the house, and I'm like, you know, and then I just went towards him. Well, we're here just to get the truth, man. Okay? I'm not here to try to put words in your mouth. And we're here to listen to what you have to say. But I'm trying to tell you that things move fast and they're sketchy and I'm trying to just recall things as they happen. You know, it may sound silly that it was just a so reason. But, you know, in, in two hours my life has changed from not ever being in handcuffs other than during training, mm -hmm. then sitting here and answering it as a fucking homicide. And that's just that. It's just that Barry's dead. That's true. Okay. Let me jump forward a little bit, okay? And the deputy arrives on scene. Yeah. Okay. Short female? Yeah. Okay. What do you tell her when, when she first gets there? Do you remember? You have the gun on you? Yeah, it was in my back pocket. And I, you know, because the, the dispatcher wanted me to take it and put it somewhere. Okay. And, you know, I, I know a little bit about chain of custody. I didn't want to, I just said, look, it's in my back pocket. And I, it is loaded. And she, I turned so she could pick it up, take it, put it out. Okay. So I wasn't hiding anything. I was, right. okay. you know, I was just trying to be as cooperative as possible. Okay. The event just happened. Oh. What else did you have on your person that she got from you? Do you remember? Um, yeah, I had my fishing knife. That that Smith and Wesson little folding knife. Yeah, okay. and I and I remember about that later because um, it was jingling around, and I had a. Um, I had um, the, the extra clip that I had on the other side of my belt, and that was uncomfortable. So the guy said it wouldn't it'd be comfortable, and I, I didn't think it would be comfortable at all. Was that and in your, your holster thing that you Yeah, carry? and I took it out, and, and it was in my pocket. When I went to Publix, and I, I kept saying, i got to take the shit out of my pocket, and mm -hmm. I, I just went down. I went to Publix and got some stuff, and then I, and they just, they kept jingling with my knife, and I said, well, when I get home, I'll take it out. Now, just like I told the guy at the range, look, if you have a gun and you have to use more than, than one clip, mm -hmm. you know, defending yourself, and that's, that's what I was for, you know. I, 
when did you buy that gun? Oh, four or five months ago. Oh, okay. Lionel claims that he purchased the gun only four months prior to the shooting. This brings up today's question for you, the viewer. Some would say that if Lionel had not been able to purchase the gun, his victim would still be alive. Others say if buying guns is illegal, then only criminals would have them and Lionel was going to take a life regardless of what weapon he was using. What are your thoughts on this topic? Please share them in the comments below. So let, let's go back to today, okay? You, um, you get there, you see her, you remember seeing him, the gun's in your back pocket, the magazine is also on your person, and then you said you lost it, and then the next thing you know, it everything happened so fast, and then he was laying on the ground. Is that correct? Yes. Do you remember anything from the time that uh, you saw him to him laying on the ground? Do you remember anything that happened in between that time? I mean, did he say something to you? Did you just react to something that he did? I saw a movement, you know, he was coming towards me, mm -hmm. his right hand was behind him, and when I saw his hand swing forward, you know, I just reacted to that. I, I didn't know what to expect, you know, I... Oh. So is that at that point, is that when you retrieved your gun from your pocket? Mm. That is correct. Okay. And then you shot him. Is that correct? I mean, is that a fair um, statement to say? I'm assuming that's correct because the man is no longer with us. Okay. I mean, you don't know uh, having a firearm, right? I mean, she didn't have a gun, right? Okay. Do you remember how many times you fired the firearm? I don't. I don't. At any time, did you point the firearm at? What is? Let me ask you this. What is it right after this happens? She was standing by the truck and, you know, wailing and yelling at me and, you know, and I, you know, and I went up there and I said, what the fuck? That's all I can remember is what the fuck. And I, you know, I put the gun in my back pocket and then I went in the house. You know, because she went in the house. And I went in, and we got to get help. And my cell phone never works in there. Did she tell you we need to get help, or did you say that? We were both yelling that we got to get help. Okay. She tried her phone. She said the battery was dead, and I picked up the house phone. And um, I grabbed my phone. I had it in my left pocket, and I got her phone, I put it in my left pocket, and I just go outside and try to help him, and the dispatcher kept telling her, can you get his pulse? And the whole time, she's trying to put the dogs away in different rooms. I says, we got to help him. If you listen to the call, you'll hear me on there. I'm trying to get here to help me help him. And it just, it just wasn't working. It just wasn't working. Did you give him CPR or right anything? No, I'm on the phone trying to get somebody there and I'm trying to get her to help me and she's just somewhere else. I haven't done CPR in a long time, plus I got some medical problems and I, I... Lionel's girlfriend is still alive because his fear of losing her was stronger than the hate he had for her for leaving him. Because he was a hoarder, he couldn't stand the thought of losing her, so when he saw another man taking her away from him, his solution was to remove the other man. A hoarder will usually get mad at the people trying to get them to throw away their belongings instead of the items themselves. Any violence in the past with you? There's never been any violence. She, Because uh, I know she told us that she had an injunction against her. I was just wondering. She, um, if you call a judge, you'll find out that that judge was waiting for her to try to do that again. She went and lied and said that I, she was afraid of me, that I threatened her. And all it was, was, was that I had lost my job and she didn't want, she co-signed for my truck. She didn't want the truck in her name anymore. She had a friend, of, I had a friend of mine put it in her name while I made payments and then I got behind those payments. And, 
we were struggling to make payments in the house. He got angry and pissed off. And one day I'm sitting there working and a deputy shows up with a restraining order. And I'm like, what did I do? Mm -hmm. There's no police report, nothing other than, you know, one can do that. And anybody can do that. Her ex-husband did it to her. We were all in the house. Her ex-husband went and filed a complaint against her, kicked us all out of the house, and stole everything out of the house. Mm -hmm. So that was one. Fifteen days later, you know, she said, you can move back in the house and, you know, we'll work this out. I waited until we, uh, I went to court and I wanted to get it from the judge because, yeah, I can go back in the house and she turns around and says something different. Mm -hmm. So I did. I went to court. The judge dismissed it. I never got a chance to tell the judge, this is a bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. So she dismissed it. Did she dismiss it or did the judge dismiss it? The judge, because she never showed up. Oh, okay. So she didn't show for her hearing. Well, because this was crap. I mean, we were talking on the phone and, you know, hey, you know, but why did you do that? And, you know, mm -hmm. and she was angry. She said, you're you know, angry, you need to help me with the bills. I said, I'm trying the best I can. And that's all it was all about money. Right. Not that I did anything to her. Right. She okay. was just angry because she wasn't money. But that was a weapon. And the thing is that it was used against her by her ex-husband, so she fought a tool. And I explained to her what the tool was for. You know, don't abuse it. Mm -hmm. You know, if everybody does it, just because that guy did it to her, it doesn't mean you have to do it. I have access to system up. Right. It's it, it just, you know, that's not the purpose of it. Right. Okay. You know, but we, again, we've had issues, but I've never laid my hands on her. Okay. okay. I've never made any threats to her. Okay. Anytime that she started yelling and screaming, I sat down. Okay, and that's one of the things that they stress at the academy and the hospital used to work. Okay, you're the big guy, sit your butt down because you're the threat. You know, it doesn't matter what she's saying. So I always sit down <coughs> and that would piss her off because she knew that I wasn't going to fight. Right. We, uh, she bought a house in Loxahachi and uh, she asked me if I wanted to come out there and I said, okay, you know, I can help her run the house. Mm -hmm. um, we lived there for about three years before we moved here. And about a year into us living there, she, one of her friends, Chris, that lives here, and her phone is in my Blackberry, she called me and said, I want to talk to you when you get home. And I said, okay. So I walked into the house, and she comes out of the room, she has two phones the cordless phone, she hands me one, and I go, hello, and as soon as I say hello, she starts screaming. She starts screaming? Yeah, mm -hmm. screaming, oh my God, blah, 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 and I'm like, what the fuck? And I just run out through the garage, to the front gate, and I stood there, and I was talking to this woman, I said, what is wrong with her? And she says, you have to leave, right? And I'm like, okay, but why is she doing all this? You know, she could just ask me to leave, mm -hmm. but... It was all a setup for her to have this witness hearing her screaming. And then two minutes later, the sheriff car shows up. Mm -hmm. So it was all planned out. And again, you can contact the West Palm Beach Sheriff Department as a report on it. And I even asked the guy, you know, I didn't do shit to her. I just got home from work, got the phone, and I got yelled at. So there was no animosity on my side. I didn't hate her. And why would I hurt her? What's that gonna get me? Time behind bars? This is not where I wanted to be today. Today I want to be able to wait at Miami Beach to fish with friends. Mm -hmm. So I, I never done anything, you know? Back in November I asked her, you know, hey, you know, your friend is telling me you're hanging out with this guy, why don't you tell me the truth? You know, and then she pushed me against my room door, you know, and yeah, I pushed her back. And then I went in my room, closed the bathroom door. There's, you know, it's got some those BS locks that you can just put a coin on it mm -hmm. and open it. So I locked the bathroom and I go and lay down in my bed and watch TV. She goes in the garage, she turns the power off to where I'm at. So, of course, you know, I wanted to go and watch TV, so I had to go back outside and she wants to fight. And I just got in my car and left. She doesn't like that. 
it's a control thing. Mm -hmm. She she takes a small little thing and blows it up to the point that is an incredible. It makes it an atom bomb, and you know. And, and I, I'm not like that. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not a materialistic person. I like simple things. She likes fancy things. Um, yeah, we're we're that different, but she's the only family that I really have here. Okay. okay. So as far as violence, there is no violence. That's just the first thing. She knows exactly where I'm at. Here's a black man just shot, you know, and oh, just, you know, I know this is not a nightmare. No, it's not a nightmare. Oh, God, why, why, why? So let me ask you about, you said you, you knew that he was around or something and that he was, uh, he did plumbing, is that correct? He uh, lost his job, I know he lost his job. He's losing his home, right. and um, he just fall back. I mean, it's, I know it's rough on a lot of people. He's, you know, uh, I guess he was doing all kinds of handiwork. I don't know. I mean, she didn't tell me. Do you think they were romantically involved with each other? Is that maybe what happened and why this all unfolded today? That was the appearance. You well, I mean, well, and, and I'm not saying that happened, okay? Well, I'm saying, is that why maybe you got upset? That's what I'm saying, when you got there and saw that. Well, I, I, I saw body language. That's what I'm, I'm seeing. I'm trying to see where it all started. Um, I'm, again, I'm not a person that's easily upset. Right. Okay, it takes a lot to get me upset, and even at my points, I walk away. I, I find it easier for me to sit in and walk away than anything else. I, I'm not, I don't like to get into brawls. Mm -hmm. I just not, not worth it. But there was something, I, you know, I'm trying to pinpoint it, but it was something with his right arm that just didn't look right. And when I saw that movement, I just reacted. Can you, do you remember? Can you be more specific on what doesn't look right? It's just the way he moved his hand. It's just, I mean, can you show me how he moved his hand? Yeah, yeah stand up. Can stand up again, show me. Oh, it's kind of hard to find. You know, like this? Yeah. And then, you know, it kind of like turned. And I, I just... Would you have your gun in your right pocket or left pocket? It's in my right pocket. You're right. Right rear pocket? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. After confessing to the murder, Lionel spends the next hour talking about his ex-girlfriend. The detectives sit quietly and listen as Lionel tells them the things he loved and hated about her. Lionel doesn't show any concern for the man he just killed. He can only think about the woman he just lost. She just... I wouldn't say selfish, but she she cries for attention, and she does take things and blows out of proportion. She's female, but you know she she came here, and I, I try to explain that to her. There was a black man in the military brought you here. You know, he was simple, and she got used to the fancy thing. So says, you know what, people with fancy things are usually more unhappy than people that don't have a lot of fancy things. But, you know, that's what she wants, that's what she wanted. She says, you know, this is America, you can pursue whatever the fuck you want. Right. I'm not that way, and I could care less. I wear holy jeans, you know, I bought shoes because I needed shoes, not because I wanted new shoes. So we, I started seeing that we were, you know, slowly you know, being torn apart by just the way we are. But that didn't mean that I didn't care for her. Right. And I could tell she'd care for me. You know, every now and then she'd show up with a new pair of pants. You know, you know, just little things. And that was fine by me. And I respected that. And I told her I always appreciated that. 
I just don't see where there's anything else. Before the interrogation ends, the detectives have one problem they need to resolve. Lionel claims that he saw his victim reach for something which caused him to react. This means that Lionel could try and claim self-defense. The detectives need to remove any doubt that what he did was murder. Well, go into the movement, and yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I know we keep addressing this, okay, because this is important. Um, and the reason I say this is because, you know, people make gestures all the time, you know, whether they're moving to put something in their back pocket, whether they're putting something in the front pocket, whether they go to scratch their back or scratch their neck, okay, and normally those people don't get shot. Right. Okay. So when you tell us he was just making a movement, there was something about the movement, I mean, you're a smart man, Lionel, and I want you to try to be a little bit more specific on what what made you shoot this man because of a movement, okay? I, the way he, he moved, it was like he was getting something from his back. And what do you think that something was? I don't know what it was, but I wasn't going to wait to see it. Okay, so you don't know if it was a weapon or not, right? You know, I saw the way he moved. Okay and what I've seen in the past, and I just reacted to that. What have you seen in the past? I've seen videotapes of people getting hurt because they just didn't move fast enough. Okay. Okay, and those were not the bad guys that got hurt. Right. And so, so let, me, let me ask you this, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but before this happened, did he threaten you? No. Did he say anything? make you angry? Did he yell at you? Did he cuss at you? No. He no. just, he walked out, made a movement, and that happened. It just looked weird, and I just, you know, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what she's told him. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Okay, and the thing is that even there were times where he would be, hey, Lionel, how's it going? Or he would call the house and I'd say, hey, Lionel, how's it going? Oh, all right, you know, how's things with you? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, oh, let me get to the, that was extended conversation. Right. But uh, after a while, he wouldn't call the house, call her cell phone number. Mm -hmm. Which, hey, you know, you can do whatever you want. You know, it don't matter. I mean, I, it looks strange. But again, this is the person that's kicked me out several times. We've had our issues. But I've always, you know, believe if she told me, hey, I'm going to the store. Okay, you know, and when I tell you I'm going to the store at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to the store. You want me to bring some milk? Mm -hmm. Because that's where I'm going. And that's the way I am. So, you know, there were times when things just look weird, but then I just say, hey, you know, um, there's not going to be anything here. You know, it, it's just not going to work. We're too opposite. You know, we care for each other to a certain level, but that's it. But so her thing, he's helping her. Apparently he was helping her. He just, he just, I saw something that threatened me you know and if I had left the damn thing where it was we wouldn't be having this conversation I'll be on my way to Miami mm -hmm. yeah. so you, you, when you say you saw something that threatened you, you are you referring to that movement yeah I just did, you know because he's never squared off like that you know the way I saw it it was kind of like you know it didn't you know, and I wasn't going to sit there and wait and peek, you know, like some people say, well, wait and see if it's, if it's what, no, I'm not going to wait. Right. And but see, that's why you do wait. Okay. This is why, okay? Because cops do this on a day-to-day -day basis, all right? And yes, we do pull our guns when we need to, okay? But if we pulled our guns on everybody, but you know, we made a movement, no. let, me, let me finish, okay? Because I've been in this situation, all right? If I pull my gun on everybody, and shot at somebody who made a movement that I thought was threatening, but they didn't have a firearm. What do you? Where do you think I would be right now? You know, the, just the way he was moving, to me, looked like he was getting something from his backside. Okay. And I couldn't, you know, I wasn't going to sit there. I don't have any protection. I don't have a vest. I don't have any backup. I don't have any of that. And I just responded. Okay. And but you never saw a firearm or weapon, though? Oh, well, afterwards, no. But you, know, you never saw one beforehand, though, right? Well, I didn't wait to see it. Okay. I mean, and that's what I was trying to explain to you. You know, I'm not going to sit there. I'm sorry. You know, I, I, you know, I didn't. 
In the end, Lionel would be charged with murder. He claimed that he only reacted in self-defense, but prosecution was able to prove it was murder. Lionel received life in prison without the possibility of parole.